Okay, let's give some players their flowers. The most unsung players that we haven't spoken about enough this season on ESPN's Football Forecast. We've got a couple that sort of overlap. Um, I'm sure we'll miss out loads, so let us know in the comments down below the players that we should have been talking about. Pippa, who is your first choice as one of the sort of unsung heroes of the Premier League season? Well, after last weekend's performances, it was at the forefront of my mind. Uh, I have to give it to Joe Willock. He's had a sensational season, as I've said. Um, three goals, five assists, ten big chances created. And that, out of those um, five assists, one of them is literally one of the assists of the season. So when he's operating around a team of players that are constantly having their praises sung, such as Almiron earlier in the season, Joe Linton, St. Maximin, like one of the best dribblers in the league. You rarely, you rarely mention players like Joe Willock, yeah. who operates as a, such an important key player. And when you've got players like Isak coming in and scoring all the goals, living up to his price tag, Joe Willock's the type of player that will get forgetting about, forgotten about. But for me, unsung hero for Newcastle this season. It's what I like this idea, because when I was sort of trying to find names, you have to, they have to sort of have done really well, but not too well, where they're being <laughs> oversung. You need to be sort of unsung players. And Joe Willis is a good option there, especially when you're talking, they're bringing all these players with that Newcastle project. You're going to focus on those other guys. Yeah. Joe Willis has been very, very consistent for them and hasn't pl played in a sort of few different positions for them as well, sort of Midfield, filling gaps yeah. or when he's got into sort of fielding for other people's average form at times. Um, I think he's a really, really good player. We've just done a video talking about Newcastle, the project, and, and if he has a long-term future. So go check that one out when you get a chance. Nabade, who do you want to put forward first? There's one here. You've got... I'm going to say the name for you just so we get it on the right page. Is Martinelli an unsung hero? He is. He is. He is. Oh, I hear me out. I hear his praises me out. every mm. week. Yeah, but that's what you think. It's not what me think. Really? Um, I think from what I've gathered over like the process of this season when Trossard came in and Martinelli went out Arsenal fans didn't want Martinelli back by the way because Trossard was playing well and we discussed it on the show oh, yeah back. remember uh, but we did do it on the show which means it, there was a consensus out there enough for a video yeah, yeah for a video. exactly <laughs> we dragged it along for eight minutes um, <laughs> and I think there's been times this season where people have gone oh, he's a bit wasteful he's a bit frustrating the last four or five games he's come really good but I think during the entirety of the season he's gradually become this player that you can constantly rely on. 15 goals and five assists for a, a kid of his age. That is not on song. But yeah, go but on, I'm listening. I think I get what you're saying because we naturally, you know, as England fans, we kind of lean towards Saka and, and what he's done. Um, but Martin Lane, with, you know, his age as well, he's so young, 21. And I think you're right. It has sort of pulled into focus, certainly the Southampton game. I think you were sort of looking around going, oh, we... You seem unable to to play through uh, Southampton, yeah. and but when Martinelli got the, on the ball, he was on a bit of a mission to get to that byline, put those crosses in, and and that you have been able to lean on him a little bit. And that, those numbers are good: fifteen goals, five assists, ten big chances created, one point eight key passes per ninety. He's been he's been he's, so important. He's a bit of a throwback winger. You know when teams are struggling, you chuck it to your winger and go, please take on your fullback for us. Get yeah. to the byline, do something. That he did that. Again, he loves well. that byline. Doesn't um, he? he loves. He, it. he runs it past the byline so many <laughs> times as well. I'm like, just keep it inside the line, buddy. <laughs> okay. um, but I think generally this season he's been one that like we've spoken about. Odegaard. We've spoken about Saka, Saliba, Ben White's been outstanding. Mm. Uh, Jesus, when he obviously had that patch in the start of the season, and Ketia when he came back in Zinchenko. I don't think Martinelli's quite had that focus yet. I think, I think we should give him some No, I, I do like that. And yeah. obviously no no penalties in that. Saka's got some of his numbers been... I'm not saying he's stat padding, but he's mm. got a couple of numbers from that as well. Pens count, by the way, people. Yes, Pens do count. <laughs> Let's stay with Arsenal. Uh, one of my pick that isn't doubled up with, with you guys. Granite Xhaka, we've spoken about him a lot today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lots of that is a screenshot right there. <laughs> Get that in on your Instagram, amazing. Five goals, five assists. I think the thing with him in terms of, again, being an unsung hero, I think he's quite low down the list when you're going through. I think, look, you know who Arsenal starting 11 is and he's definitely in that. But I think he does a lot of stuff where... If you're watching the ball, you're not really understanding the movement that he provides by sometimes actually just getting out the way, but also just playing a simple pass and, and looking comfortable in that area. Fascinating to think a bit about Arteta, who obviously knows that position as a defensive midfielder, knew actually Partey's the first guy I'd probably need to bring into this club. And although Xhaka is, is a good player, he's not a good player here. He's a little bit further forward. None of us called that. And you see what you miss when he's not in the side for several different reasons. And again, not like Martinelli or Saka or Odegaard is going to play that pass, which is going to blow your mind. 
he's just been so consistent in a, in an attacking sense that you you wouldn't go to him first in terms of that talking point and five goals as well you know scoring goals when it, when you need him to yeah. I think he's been absolutely fantastic and and I, I think if you go through the players that we've spoken about this year I think Jack is sort of number number eight number nine on that list and so that's why I wanted to to put him forward I've got no complaints about your option yeah we're okay with that <laughs> come on All right let's ESPN carry on viewers no so. And next up, well, kind of, this is one of my picks, but I can't remember which one of you two wanted to put this person forward. Solly March. Me. Solly March. What a player. There has to be a Brighton player in here. Yeah. And again, I think we've spoken about Matoma so much. But Solly March has been, again, it, it's really gone up a level this year, Pippa, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I hate to bring it up, but I'm so gutted that he missed a penalty again <sighs> uh, this season. Not sure he wants to be on penalty duty again, but um, he's squad... Um, pens our goals. Yeah, pens. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's had an incredible season. And I feel like, like I said about Joe Willock, he gets forgetting about in his role, the assist that he puts forward, his scoring goals... And he's a key reason as to why Brighton are doing so well, as well as so many other players. They've got a really good squad of players, yeah. but Solly March's name don't get mentioned enough for what he contributes to the game. Seven goals, seven assists. You know, when you're sort of playing out there, you need to create and you need to offer some output. 16 big chances created. And this, the two key passes per 90, we spoke about uh, on a video talking about who's going to get into the top four and Brighton, of course, are one of those contenders. We were talking about their XG being really high. You know, he is a big part of that. He's got a lovely sort of license to to do all those things as well, Nabe, doesn't he? Yeah, I think his final product's been massive this season. I literally just pulled up the stats saying prior to this season, he'd scored four goals in his Premier League career. Wow. So seven this season. Good That's stat, cool. Nabe. Like, we love a stat. <laughs> That's good um, stuff. I just think, like, when you play the sort of football Brighton do, you need players who are going to put the ball in the back of the net. And you need players who are constantly creating and he's one of those guys I think in the final uh, against United he was one of the players that was basically sprinting in the 120th minute and I think that gets forgotten about a little bit because Brighton plays such high intensity football mm. um, top player I'm pretty good I missed him out to be fair yeah I, I, yeah, he's done absolutely brilliant for, and again when Matoma's scoring these ridiculous goals yeah. and there's such an interesting story around him as well Again, he's kind of been forgotten. So we're we are singing for you, Sully. Right, another one uh, that me and you have got in the Fabian Shaw. Mm. Yeah, um, I think in this whole Newcastle side, there's been a lot of talk about um, Botman because he came in for a big fee, Trippier because he's been absolutely outstanding, Dan Byrne because he brings the vibes. And Fabian Shaw's always been this guy that I think people have gone, he's a bit irresponsible. He flies into tackles. I think actually this season he's tamed down a lot he's got a partner next to him who does the the more rash work and technically I think he's actually played in midfield a few times for Newcastle also Switzerland as well so and he's handsome so <laughs> yeah I got I got uh, we were talking about critique online I got a lot of critique online because I was talking about the players in that team and, and, and I said yeah they're not sexy people didn't like that because <laughs> Fabian is, Shaw is, he is sexy he is. <laughs> very very sexy uh, 1.6 interceptions per 90 1.4 tackles I think the important one here obviously 11 clean sheets is a part of that back four uh, aerial dual success rate really high 66% as well and I think great thing in terms of being on that list yeah. you've got the signings that you go through and you go oh they've all done brilliantly and then you get the sort of um, redemption arc of the guy, guys like Joe Linton and Almiron yeah. those kind of players and that's why again Fabian Shaw doesn't get spoken about at all he's also got a screamer in him yes. at times yeah. um, so Love yeah I think I to obviously totally agree he's one of my three players that we're putting forward uh, last two then for you guys uh, let's go to you first Nabade I didn't expect to see this name Matthias Jensen for Brentford I think um, Brentford are, are one of these sides where like a lot of their players feel underwhelming you know because the, the sort of style of football they're yeah. playing I mean you're going to hate to hear this being a QPR fan uh, but the style of football they play isn't particularly attractive and players can go missing so everyone goes Ivan Tony's a good player though because yeah. obviously he scores goals Brian Burma's a good player yeah. I know you don't think that but a lot of people do think that Ben Mee's a good player but yeah. again it's another player that you go but He's all right, though. Whereas I think Matthias Jensen, five goals, five assists, three big chances. Only Mbouma's got more assists for Brentford this season. But considering the way Brentford play, they actually do just lump it up to Ivan Tony. Can you flick it onto Mbouma? Can you get it back from Mbouma? He's sort of this player that I think... It actually, to be fair, when Liverpool have been screaming for a midfield, I really wanted to go get Matej Jensen. I really like him. He's got that in him. I, I really, I think oh, I think he gets eaten alive. Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool play three, three midfielders who just work their socks off. Um, so unless we change the dynamic I think he he has the potential to play for a top club not that I didn't hard. think he was so I had to apologise to Matej Jensen earlier in the season because I had said he's not a Premier League player 
Um, I think he is a Premier League player. I think that, as you say, that is a kind of functional team. And I think it's a good shout as an unsung hero because he's kind of the furthest forward of that uh, That sort of... Uh, I think sometimes it's a fully Danish yeah, midfield, yeah. Damsgaard and Norgaard as well. Um, but he's been sort of the furthest forward one, and I think that's sort of helped to his numbers. But also, Redford often kind of go down the down the wings using Rico Henry a lot uh, this season as well. But I think he's definitely, definitely, definitely improved and proven that he is a Premier League player. So I like it. It's a good, it's a good, good shout. Good well, shout. A quick shout out, because I, I forgot to put him in my three. Harrison Reed. Mm. Everyone thought he was not yeah. uh, capable. He has been certainly capable. Another player I think people weren't sure about is your final pick, which I think is a great shout as well. Philip Billing. Yes. I mean, forgive my ignorance. Is he a, is he a box to box, box to box midfielder, defensive midfielder, a striker? Who knows at this point? Yeah. He also gave me a, a mini heart attack at the Emirates <laughs> when he scored what twenty seven seconds, yeah. and then went on to went to score against Liverpool as well. He's been he's got seven goals this season, uh, one assist, and five big chances created. He's been one of the saving graces for Bournemouth this season. I know they're they're struggling a lot and could possibly be going down. Yeah. Um, but. For what it's worth, he has given them some hope, and I he's given them, he's given Bournemouth fans some amazing memories for the season. Good shout! He played as a six for Huddersfield when they went down. To be fair, and uh, yeah. he did look poor in that side. And then he's come back, and now he's a box box midfielder. So I, I think, it, and he's getting. I mean, it's kind of it's a shadow striker in the team that's going to play on the counter attack. Mm. That's what they did really well. And that's what so the goal against Arsenal was. Saliba was a bit caught because Saliba was sort of there, and Solanke was. Um, in between the two of them yeah. and he thought oh, okay I've got him and then all of a sudden Philip Billing was there making those runs and I think when you've not got better players you need to have that bit of energy uh, and I guess a bit of a license to go and that's what I think Billing's done really well for the last two seasons in the championship scored a lot of goals as well seven goals this year as you said uh, I think he's allowed Bournemouth to play in a different way that could well keep them up so mm. I think it's a really big good, good shout and we're seeing this more and more players sort of moving from one position and, and uh, to to another one. And Philip Billing's a, a great example of that, isn't he? Surprised you didn't give Dom Slanky a shout, to be fair. Yeah. He's your guy. There's <laughs> a lot of players you could have given a shout to. You. That's quite hard. No, to he has a particular affiliation with <laughs> oh, Dom really? I think I still owe you money for that, actually, <laughs> because I thought he'd score a, maybe a couple more. But yeah, no, look, let's chuck Dom Slanky in as well. Look, there's got to be a lot of names that we've missed. So let's know who is an unsung hero from your team that we've missed out. Let's know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.